What's up guys, Thurs Cousin here. In this video, we are going to review React code that's gonna make you a better developer. All right, cool. So this is the app that we're going to be reviewing. It's called Blackford Hosting Giveaways, and it's actually an app that was submitted to me on Discord by someone named Abel. It's actually one of our mods. This is an app that is built with React. Obviously, it's built with Next.js. It's using the latest app router, and it's also using server components. Although every server component, as you're gonna see, is actually a client component because we have used client everywhere. Cool, so the first thing that I want to look at is this sign-in page here, right? It's a pretty simple page. You have the title here, you have a form with the email and password, and then you have some links in case you forgot your password or you realize that actually what you wanted to do was to sign up instead. If you look at the code for this, you're gonna see that it's your standard Next.js configuration. You have a couple of folders here, and then you have all of your configuration files for Tailwind and so on. We're gonna look at the app directory under auth, right? Because we're dealing with the sign-in. And then we're gonna go and open up the sign-in page. Now, the first thing that you're gonna notice is that I commented this thing here, because if I didn't, and I actually saved this, and I go back to my application, you get greeted with this beautiful error from Next.js that tells you that you're attempting to export metadata from a component marked with use client, which is not what you're supposed to do, right? It's disallowed. I'm not sure exactly what happened here, right? But this is how I got the code when I received it. And usually if you're gonna send your code to someone for review, you wanna actually make sure that the code works, right? That there's no error, but yeah, this was this way. I think maybe like use client was added later on and then like the person didn't actually check that the app still worked, but I essentially had to comment this out and also comment it in every other page because every other page exported this and essentially the entire app was broken because you couldn't access any page because of the error. Let's now look at the actual code for the sign-in page. And the first thing that you know I'm looking at is this block of code right here which honestly I'm confused about, and it's actually not even obvious what this code actually does, right? Like why are we check checking type of window is equal to undefined and then doing this block of code here? Like why are we making that check? Well, it turns out after I've done some research that this, because we're using Next.js and Next.js can run on the server, like this page can run on the server. If you wanna do some code that is required for browser only stuff, you have to make sure that you are running on the browser and not on the server because this window here and thus this local storage and all this logic that we're doing here is not available in the server environment. Which honestly, like I get, I get why this was done this way, but this to me is not obvious right off the bat. And if you don't know about Next.js and if you don't do the research like I did, because you have to actually go and find the GitHub issue that shows this, you're gonna get confused and you're not gonna know exactly what this is for. But also this isn't actually needed, right? Because you have use client here at the top, which explicitly tells Next.js that this component should only be rendered on the client. And so this window object here will always be defined. You don't need to make this check, which actually further kind of indicates to me that this use client maybe was added later on. And that's why you also forgot to check for metadata. So you can actually get by with just removing this and your code is still gonna work exactly the same way. Then there's the other thing, the actual code that checks this. This, I get what you're trying to do, right? You're trying to get the local storage, the token from the storage, and then check if it's expired or not. And then if it's not expired, you're manually changing the href of the location to home. Now, you shouldn't do this. This is not the way that you should do this. I get that you're trying to redirect the user if there's no token, but did you know that Next.js has a thing called redirect, right? If you import it from Next Navigation, that can do exactly the same thing instead of this, right? You don't need to do it yourself by manually updating the location href. You can just use Next.js inbuilt functionality to do that. And also, as you're gonna see, this is repeated code because every single page seems to have this piece of code that checks the token and then redirects the user if the token is invalid. This ideally should be in its own custom hook because that's generally how you want to use React, right? React is hooks based, which means that if you have some logic that is shared across different components, you extract it into its own custom hook and use the hook instead. So you might wanna do something like this, like you wanna create a new folder here called hooks. This should be a folder at the root level and inside you wanna create your own custom hook, which is gonna be use login token.ts and inside you wanna do export const use login token and then that is going to essentially do the same logic here, right? It's going to try to get the token from the local storage. It's going to import this is verified is token expired function. And then it's also going to 
import the navigation from Next.js and then you can just come in here, you can save this, you can come in here, get rid of all of this and then do use login token and then you get the same functionality for a fraction of the amount of code. Then if we just look at the rest of this component, this is a sign-in form, right? So we have the state for the sign-in form, we have an is loading flag, and then we have this function here that actually signs the user in, and the rest is essentially some JSX that renders out the form component. If you look at the actual code here, right? Like the first thing that I notice is that there's no types for this and there's no validation, right? We have sign-in data, which we only know that it can be of type email, password, and remember me, but there's no actual TypeScript types that are helping us. And even worse, there's no actual validation performed on the email or password. The only validation that is actually performed is if I type something invalid here and I submit it, we have this basic browser validation that says that this is an invalid email address. You don't want to have this usually because it doesn't look really nice. It's not part of the UI. And honestly, to me, this looks very low effort. Ideally, what you want to do is you want to use a form library, something like React hook form or formic. And you also want to use something like Zot for validation, because you can actually put some regex, maybe your password here, you want to have an uppercase letter, you want to have a symbol, you want to have numbers, right? You can do all of those things if you had a regex and an automatic way to type check these things. Cool. So now let's look at this page here. This is the dashboard because I've now signed in into an account that I created. And this is the home page of the dashboard. So if I go here to the actual code, and I go here to dashboard and then home and then page. This is the page that is rendering this UI right here, right? So again, we have a very simple page. We have the title here. We have a headline that tells me my name and we have confetti falling. Is it because I, that's a cool touch. That's a really cool touch. If I type my name, there's confetti, confetti falling. I like this. Good job. This saves this whole review. Good job project passed. And then you have here a list of giveaways. And if I put enter giveaway, it's going to ask me to verify my email, which I haven't done. Honestly, I'm not quite sure how to do that. But I think this is fine. We can just look at the code for this right away. So first of all, again, I had to comment out the metadata here because it was airing out once again. And then this code is a little bit more confusing. The first thing that struck to me was this user data here, which again, there are no types, right? Like the types comes automatically inferred by inferred by TypeScript. But like, first of all, why do we have a capital F for full name? Why is there a capital E for email? That's not usually what you do in JavaScript or TypeScript. But also this user data here, like, what is it? There's nothing obviously indicating to me what this data is and what it's actually used for in this component. If we look at where set user data is used, you're going to see that it's used here in this use effect, which is even weirder, to be honest. This effect is run on mount and it's making a post request using Axios to API slash users slash user data. And then with the response that is getting, it's setting the user data from that response. But why is this making a post request on mount? Are we updating the user? Are we creating a user? Because that's usually what you do post for, right? This is unclear to me. And then that response, we're setting the user data, which is fine because we're then using the user data in our actual component. But this pattern feels very wrong to me. And I think this could have been refactored into something different. And then right below, you have another use effect that also fires on mount, but this one is a get request. And this one makes more sense because you're fetching the list of giveaways from this endpoint. And then you're setting them in the state to then use in the application, which is the giveaways that we're seeing here on the screen. Now, see, this is fine. However, what I would have done is you see where we're, first of all, we're doing local storage dot get item here to get the token, but we've already done it here in this piece of code here. We don't need to repeat this again. If we were to put this into our use login token hook like we had it before, we could even make this hook return to us login token. And then we can just do const login token equals use login token. And then we have access to it in our entire component. And then we don't need to do this, right? We can just do login token. And then we don't need to repeat ourselves. And we extend this hook to make use for it and give us the things that we need. Right, so that's one thing, but then I would even take this a step further because here what we're doing in this use effect is we're calling Axios directly and we're setting the headers, we're setting the method, we're doing all of these manual things, we're setting the token manually. I would instead create, what you can do with Axios is you can do something like const API equals axios.create 
And then you can create some basic things like the method, post or whatever. You can do some things like the headers, right? You can add some headers to your app and you can do something like the base URL, something like this, right? And then instead of calling Axios and then doing it that way, you could do API dot get right and that would fire a get request and actually if we do that we don't need the method here this would fire a get request with this object that we created which means that it's going to have access to our base url we could do things like add data to it automatically right we could inject this hook and the logic of this hook we could inject it into this object that we create here so that we don't have to do it every single time right you always want to be thinking like this when working with react and in code in general you want to abstract as much as you can and reuse things as much as you can because this is going to help you build things much faster and then there's this function here, which honestly is the strangest of them all. It's the function called enter giveaway, which essentially just enters you into a giveaway and fires this API request, this post request to enter the giveaway. But if we look at where it's actually being used, right? First of all, giveaway title equals e.target.id. This works in terms of TypeScript because we have any here. First of all, you should like clear any, you should never have any in your application. This can easily be fixed by going to where the function is used, right? It's used in a button component. You could actually hover over this E here, this event, and actually just copy this right here, copy this, go back to the function definition, and then instead of any, literally just do this. And then TypeScript is going to complain, but all you really have to do is just do react dot, and then you have automatic typing of your actual event. And then you would see that ID, is not a property of that event. It's really not, it doesn't come pre-built with this event because what we're doing here is we're manually setting this ID to the giveaway title, which is an anti-pattern. You should never, never do this. This ID is then set to giveaway title in the function, which if you look at giveaway title, honestly, this is also an anti-pattern. You shouldn't have variables that are modifiable like this in your component. You actually don't even need to do this, right? Like if you go to giveaway title, what you could have done is in this enter giveaway, instead of passing the event, because you don't really care about the event, you're only using the event to get this ID thing, I would instead pass the giveaway give away ID. And that's going to be of type string, I think. And then you can kill this, you can pass the giveaway ID here, giveaway ID, right. And then when you enter the giveaway, you want to first of all, kill this ID thing, because you actually don't need to. And then instead of E, you can clear this, and then you can just pass giveaway dot, actually, it's going to be title because you don't actually have an ID. That's fine. So we can do here, title, it's going to be a type string and then this is going to be title, right? It's going to be like this. You don't need to use this ID property to store some value that you can directly pass to the function. It is an anti-pattern. You want to pass to the function everything that it needs or the function should be able to get what it needs from another function or from some piece of state and then use it that way. You shouldn't use an HTML button to store some value and then even worse, right? Store that value in the state using a var, which is an anti-pattern and then use that in your application, in your component. You're going to get some bugs that are honestly very hard to debug and I would not recommend that you do this. And then, yeah, I think I think that's it, right? Like we kind of covered most things. Everything else looks really good. This is disclaimer built by a junior developer. So it's obviously expected to see some things like this, to see places where they, things can be improved. And honestly, Abel, I would use this video. I would take the time to look and understand the things that I suggested for you and apply them because I really think that they would help you out in the long term and make you a better React developer. Cool. So there you go. That was another code review done. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave it a big thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe because it really does help me out a lot. It shows me that you enjoy my content and that you want to see more of these types of videos, which I promise you I am going to make. Once again, if you haven't joined the Discord, I would strongly urge you to do so. It is the best resource for React developers available, period. And also, if you want me to review your code, feel free to suggest it in the Discord. I would be more than happy to do that. With that being said, my name has been Darius Cousin. This is Cousin Solutions. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Ciao, ciao.